right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, this is uh, part three of our reproductive system. This is uh, female hormone regulation. So it's a quite more, uh, quite a bit more complicated than the male system. Uh, so uh, do your best to follow along, and we're going to be doing this uh, a lot in class here. So the nice thing for you guys is that the hormones in the males, uh, the regulation system is almost identical uh, to start. So the hypothalamus still secretes GnRH, so that gonadotropin uh, releasing hormone. The gonadotropin releasing hormone targets the anterior pituitary, which causes LH luteinizing hormone and FSH follicle stimulating hormone to be released. Uh, that's where the similarities stop. Uh, they produce different uh, hormones, progesterone and estrogen. Okay. Okay, so let's look at uh, FSH and see what it does in females. It's similar in terms of the function, but in terms of the the uh, actual thing that it produces is different. So it's responsible for the follicular phase, and we'll talk about the phases in more detail soon. Uh, another way to say that is, is it stimulates the mature, maturation and growth of the follicle. So here's our egg, our ovum. Here's the follicle. When FSH is released, it goes in the bloodstream and targets our targets the ovaries and more specifically the follicle and it continues to develop and mature and mature and mature until eventually it bursts and releases the egg which is ovulation okay so for this one FSH directly related to stimulating the follicle which is not surprising because FSH stands for follicle stimulating hormone uh, LH is the other one that's stimulated by the anterior pituitary or release sorry uh, LH, uh, luteinizing hormone, in the males it uh, stimulated the production of uh, testosterone. Similar function in the females, it's going to stimulate the production of their hormones, which is progesterone and estrogen. So it stimulates the follicle cells uh, to produce progesterone and estrogen. Uh, when After day 14, uh, when ovulation occurs, which again we'll talk about the cycle in a minute, uh, it leaves this corpus luteum behind. It continues the same function as before, but it's really heavy in progesterone. Okay, so it produces estrogen and progesterone after day 14, uh, but progesterone very heavily uh, for the reasons we'll talk about in a minute. So progesterone, when it's secreted, what does it actually do? It controls something called the secretory phase. So this progesterone that was made in the ovary by the follicle, it targets uh, right here, the endometrium. Okay, and that endometrium is where that the baby will end up attaching or the fetus. So what has to happen is we have to make sure that it's, it has the right conditions. In order for a developing zygote uh, to be able to attach to it, it has to be thick and it has to be mature and it has to be secretory. So what does secretory mean? It basically means uh, blood vessels. So it has to have a lot of blood vessels so it can provide nutrients to that tissue. And it also has to have uh, mucus cells. So those cells that are usually just kind of like skin cells uh, can be converted into these things called goblet cells which secrete mucus. Okay. And then estrogen. Uh, estrogen, again, secreted by the ovary, the follicle. Uh, it also targets the endometrium, and this is called the proliferative phase. When things proliferate, it means they grow. So this causes the, the wall to become thick. So it thickens endometrium. Okay? So people that would have a thin endometrial wall and would not not be able to conceive as easily because it needs a thick spot to attach. And by it, I mean the developing zygote. Okay? Uh, and then finally, for estrogen... Uh, on day 14, and again we're going to talk about the cycles in a second, uh, that's when the follicle matures and is released. Uh, the reason why it's released is because estrogen get, gradually starts building up because it's being released. Once it gets to its highest point, it causes a big spike in LH, and that LH is responsible for causing that uh, follicle to, to rupture here. So as you can see on the side here, we have our estrogen levels increasing, increasing. Once it's at the highest, it causes our LH spike, and the LH spike corresponds with the ovulation. Okay? And then the corpus luteum, um, as we said, the corpus luteum is formed on day 14 after ovulation, and it keeps on secreting the estrogen and heavily on the progesterone. Okay? 
Uh, but unfortunately, it stops uh, secreting estrogen and progesterone on uh, after. Sorry, uh, when it's done, it stops secreting estrogen and progesterone, and this uh, triggers menstruation. So when there's no more estrogen and progesterone, that's what causes the endometrial line to shed. Okay, I told you we're going to get into these cycles, and as you can see, there's quite a bit here. Uh, there's three phases in the ovarian cycle, so this happens in the ovaries. Uh, follicular phase, ovulation, luteal phase. Follicular phase, this is where the follicle is growing and maturing, just like we saw uh, last day, and it's due to FSH being secreted. Okay. Uh, on day 14, when we have that increase in estrogen, which causes the big spike in LH, uh, this causes the graphene follicle to burst and release the ovum. And so again, this is called ovulation. And then for the next 15 to 28 days, all that's happening is that leftover follicle, which is called the corpus luteum, which again regulated by the LH, releases estrogen and, and a lot of progesterone in order to make the uh, endometrial wall thicker and more mature. Okay, So as you can see, both of these here are going to be uh, affecting the uterus, even though it's happening in the ovaries. Okay, So pause that if you need to get it all jotted down. So like I just said, everything that's happening in the ovaries is causing uh, things to happen in the uterus. So the hormones that are created in the ovaries affect what's happening in the uterus. Okay, so you can pause that. Okay, so let's look at the uterine cycle. So this is happening, as we just said, in the uterus, and more specifically, the endometrium. I might run out of here, room here. Uh, so let's start about talk about uh, menstrual phase first, so or also called the flow phase. This is called uh, menstruation. So what triggers m menstruation is the end of the uh, ovarian cycle. So when the corpus luteum stops, when it degenerates, it stops producing uh, E and P, estrogen and progesterone. And what that does is it stops making the endometrial wall thick and stops make it, making it secretory, and what it does is it causes the endometrium to shed. Okay, So that takes about, you know, depending on the cycle, between uh, one and, or four and five days, but it happens on day one through five. Uh, the next one is the proliferative phase. Proliferative means to grow. Uh, it's on days six to 14, and then this is where estrogen is secreted by the follicle, so it's not the corpus luteum yet, and it causes the endometrium to thicken. Okay. And then finally, now that the corpus luteum has uh, has formed by because of ovulation, on day 15 to 28, this is where progesterone is secreted by the follicle, uh, corpus luteum, and what it does is it causes it, the endometrium uh, to become mature and secretory. Mature means more blood vessels for more nutrients. Secretory means produce mucus, so secretes mucus. Okay, uh, even though it doesn't mention uh, progesterone, there is progesterone being created here and estrogen created here, but they're different amounts. Heavy estrogen here, heavy progesterone here because of their functions. Okay, pause that and get it all down. So key ideas, what do you have to know? You need to remember that hypothalamus and the anterior, anterior pituitary controls the ovary by secreting these hormones. Uh, they cause the ovary to ripen and release the egg on day 14, and then the ovary is secreting estrogen progesterone throughout the cycle. Uh, also, the ovary controls the uterus by way of estrogen and progesterone to create a thick and mature endometrium. And uh, I know it's a lot. We need to make sure that we know what each of the hormones do first uh, before we can talk about their influence on the different cycles. So we'll be tackling that tomorrow.